Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Norland. Hope you're having a great day today. We're going to be focusing on crime. But before that happens, right after I shut the recording off last time, Rosia got herself pregnant. You did it, Glance. We're proud of you. She's got the green face now, too. So that's going to happen. Alina is going to have a baby. Uh, she's now immobilized. Uh-oh. Uh, she's going to have her baby in 24 hours. So we're going to have that. But hey, look, the other one's pregnant now, too. Hooray. No idea how that's going to work out. <laughs> so we'll figure out how the whole like Lord Shuffle situation works. Okay. In this video, we're focusing on crime. And I'm probably like too little too late here. But... We need to do what's, po what's possible. So two things I'm going to do first. I'm going to prompt night patrols. And we're going to cover the Lord's houses with night patrols. Right about here like this. So night patrol to try to keep the Lord's safe. That kind of thing. Okay. Um, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to barracks. And I think I want to place a barracks. Well... I could put it right behind here, I guess. Yeah, why don't we put this... I'll put it right here. Okay. And we're going to have this house built first thing in the morning. All right now, I've been stockpiling wood. Uh, so that I can build things fast if I need to. So this is this is going to be the building we build, we build first thing in the morning. These This warrior shed thing. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do... Once we have the warrior's house built... Is I'm going to free my slaves. Right? Free the prisoners... And they're going to become warriors. I'll pay a good wage. Speaking of which, for the wages, I've decided I'm going to pay everyone six now. All right? I'll pay the warriors five still, but the wages, I'm going to go six. I'm hoping that makes people happier. Okay? Everything goes uh, through smoother there, hopefully. Maybe that will prevent other people from becoming vagabonds. And the next thing is, I currently have five unemployed. That's no good. Uh, so temporarily, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to provide four gold for unemployment benefits. That's just enough for them to eat every day. Not enough to get any alcohol. But if you're unemployed, at least you won't go hungry. I'm hoping that that is going to trigger these guys who are unemployed now to not become vagabonds. Because at least they get to have food. Until I can address that labor situation, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to try to get warriors from within as opposed to hiring mercenaries from out outside. Because that's very expensive to do and I just don't have the gold to do it. So I'd like to, as best as I can, train warriors from in here. So to do that, the next building we're going to need is the training ground. And that training ground, I'm going to place that, I think, right in front of the warrior's house. I'll probably just put it right here. It's easy to see here. So we're going to place the warrior thing right here. Make sure this is built first. Then we're going to get prisoners, free them, turn them into warriors. They'll be here. Uh, and then the training ground will be built right here. Now we currently have five cutthroats, it says. So like there's five people here that can legitimately like attack our lords and stuff. We don't want that to happen. I'm not entirely sure how to properly defend that. Because it seems like they just sort of wander over near our houses and then just attack, right? Um, so keeping an eye on the Lord's houses is probably the way to go here. But as far as like getting my Lords to go and help out, they kind of just have to be in the area. Uh-oh. This is a problem too. Rosia is like, there's like green shit all over the place. Is she just feeling really sick? Right? Is that how that goes? You might just be feeling really sick. Um, yeah, it's, she doesn't have like a trait that tells me that she's sick. But I mean, that, that is part of the status right here, right? Nausea and slowed walking. But just like odd that it's green everywhere. <laughs> she's been throwing up all over herself, I guess. Oh, see? These guys right here. They seem like they're, yeah, they're breaking the lock. So this is the type, of, the type of thing that we need to stop from happening. So both of these guys are going at going into this building here, which I assume is Charles's place. So they're basically here to try and assassinate the king. Okay. And I don't think I can really do much about that 
other than just forming up an army really quick with like Charles and Glance, having Charles and Glance form an army together right now and just going in and beating their ass. I think that's the only way I could do this. So yeah, I think that's what I'll just do. So both of these guys are warriors now and they're going to retrieve their weapons and now we're ready to just fight and we're just going to go up and, and, and beat their ass. Right? If you want to battle me, then we're ready. Let's go. Right? Goes to sleep. Goes to contemplate. Yeah. And then you got these guys who are fighting each other. And they're, you know, Varns and, and Caden fighting each other. But I think that right there is the only way that I can, like, manually defend my lords. Is to form them into an army together like this. And keep them together like this. And then, like, they're just going to sit around waiting for their chance to strike right that that kind of thing and uh i obviously don't want to give them that chance but if they want to take the chance oh yeah you're just gonna you're passing out because you haven't slept right of course <laughs> well hey that's one way to do it huh? so glance will just sit out here outside and as long as glance is here it's an army in the area so they're just gonna like wander here waiting for their shot right i think that's how that works so if I take the army now um, and disband the army, now what happens to this dude? Is he going to try to get into the, the Lord's house again? Because, they, again, they were breaking the lock. That was the whole, that was the way to tell that who's going after the Lord, right? So I think that's how I have to do it. So that's going to be how I try to defend, at least tonight. But once we have warriors, even if they're not very good at their job, like, even if they're not very good fighters, their presence there alone is a deterrent, right? It's just kind of like police officers. When they're in the area, they may not be very good cops. For all the criminal knows, that cop is, like, has no interest whatsoever in doing anything today, right? But the fact that they're in the area immediately gives whoever's trying to do nefarious acts pause, right? Right? And that's enough. It's just their presence is a deterrent. And that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to, to, to generate a deterrent. So I don't need good warriors. I just need warriors, period. And if I can, you know, free some slaves to have that happen, then that's great. So I'll look to do that to, in a way, kind of buy my own warriors that way. Um, we'll see how that goes. Alina has gained the personality trait contemptuous. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound like a good thing. Plus 30% chance that the character will choose to ignore during conversations. Longtime owner of a large number of holy rings. Oh, no. So she's just all full of herself then, huh? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I guess that's how it's going. Uh, Hey, this guy's still here. With your 13 rings. You want to lose some more? Oh, she's got 23. Hey, Glance. Glance, you want to go take her rings? Glance, 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 Glance. Go take her rings, buddy. Play some dice. Glance. Ooh, she's got 11. Oh, I'm inspired right now, so I also have a 50% chance of winning. Oh, okay, Glance first. <laughs> glance first. Glance is a nat 11. Uh, he doesn't need the inspiration to get it. So, maybe he'll have a better chance. If he loses, maybe we'll we'll use we'll have Charles try to. So she currently has twenty three, and now she has eighteen. Ha ha ha! He wins. Ha ha! Good job, Glance. He's got twenty rings now. He can feel pretty good about himself. Oh yeah! All right, perfect. So uh, we're building uh, the barracks. Very nice. And then there's our training ground right here. Now we can appoint a manager in this, and it's whoever has best combat skill and, and all that stuff. So that, that's going to be Charles. Charles is going to be our warrior trainer. Okay. What we're going to want to do then is we're going to want to make our slaves be warriors if possible. Okay. Um, now one of the things I, I have to figure out how to do with the process of that, I think it's here, right? We say Lords, we say warriors, uh, free prisoners. One, two, we could try that. Okay. I, th I think that's how that works. Um, if I just do that and leave the screen, uh, I want to do this one too. Loyalist. So here, 
Yeah, you and you and you. I think I want all of you guys to be part of this. Yeah. All of you guys are part of this troop. Now, I don't have a whole lot of weapons, okay? That part's sad. That's a sad face. I don't have a lot of weapons. Um, but we at least have warriors. They're at least there. And that should allow us to move around as an army, right? We can now move around. The, the, the slaves are freed as warriors. They don't have... Uh, they don't have any weapons or anything, but I can move them down here. I want to move them down here. So get all my warriors to move down with me here. Okay. Now they're obviously they're drafted right now and I don't want them to be like under my control immediately like this. So I'm looking for this to be more of like a passive thing. So I probably did this wrong. Um, so this is how I control an army. And if I was to, if I was to disband this, if I do that and disband it, you are now, I think, considered warriors, right? You're you're not considered, I think, anyway, right? Yeah, and Charles is going to go in here, and you guys are going to be training now, right? Yes, I think that's how that works. So how does this work? Training ground, instructions not received, your instructions here, you two are going to the temple, and I, I believe these are the two slaves. Okay, these are the two slaves that we just freed. So, I believe they're going to the temple, and they haven't decided if they want to stay with us yet. We just freed them. But these are the warriors, right? And uh, we now need to start looking at how to get, you know, weapons. Uh, we're probably going to have to find the next trader that comes in. We're going to have to buy, you know, more maces and swords and, and some armors and shields and all that kind of stuff. Start equipping ourselves to better... Uh, to be able, be better to be able to handle this, right? Um, now, I think these three are staying, but you two are, again, the, the slaves, they're red. I, I don't know if this means, like, there's a little, like, sad face here. You, you, they may be taking off. They may not stay here. We'll see how that goes. They have 100 loyalty, so maybe they will be good. Their mood is, is terrible. Their fear of death is here. Just a peasant, not a warrior. I'll be killed in the very first battle. Expires in 46 hours. But, I mean, it's not fully offsetting this. So, I'm wondering if their mood is that bad, they may choose to take off. I didn't realize this fear of death thing was going to be that powerful. But that's a pretty powerful thing. Um, I'm certainly not going to grant them any titles. Um, and I don't have the scaffold learned yet. But at least these warriors are... They're gaining experience. <laughs> they're doing they're doing what they can do. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we've added five warriors and any other peasants that are in a, a, a relatively poor mood or are not a fanatic, um, they can they can become warriors as well. But at least we have somebody, right? And the warriors, I think, will patrol in this area. I, I think so. If I say I want, you know, I guess two guards here, three guards here. Uh, I don't want that patrol radius to be that big. We're going to keep the area this small. Uh, I'm hoping that's how that goes. Now, that's a night patrol. So they work from 23 to 4. Uh, day patrol routes and stuff, we would want to keep it near prisoner areas so we can prevent them from escaping. So it, while they're working in the fields, they if they have an eagerness to escape and they're outside their cell, right? Let's say they're working in the field. They may have an eagerness to escape. And so while they're working, they'll just be like, I'm gone. And they'll try to make a run for it. And so we would want day patrols to be in the area where our prisoners are working. And that might deter them from trying to run. Or at least allow us to try to catch them when they do try to run. We don't have any prisoners anymore. So that won't be an issue. Uh, other than the possibility of our existing prisoners leaving. Um, I would actually love to take the unemployed that are here. Healthy unemployed and just make them prisoners or make them warriors. I, I would love to do that, but it doesn't seem like there's an, oh, hang on. Maybe I can, no, these are all fanatics. I need to not have fanatics. I need the fanatics to go away. And then we have the mercenaries, which are very expensive. So I don't want to do that, but either way that I think this is, this is a good start. 
uh, I guess, to, to try and to defend ourselves here. There's Chesta, divining with bones. So she's like, I guess she's trying to like get a reading on her future kind of thing. These guys are just going to beat the hell out of each other to train. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. New knowledge game from the book, Flavorful Ale. We now know how to make Flavorful Ale. So th this uh, brewery should now be able to make Flavorful Ale. A manager bonus is going to satisfy the need for rest. Yes, we're able to do that. Um, I'd love to get that upgraded too. But we now know how to make that, which is perfect. Uh, and we can also do the pig farm now too, which I have unemployed. So let's make the pig farm if we can. Uh, we're running a little short on the time for this. Um, but I think the pig farm, we could put that maybe back here. I want to leave enough room to where we can expand food a little bit faster. So I'm thinking like right here and then right below that here. So I, I think we'll do two pig farms. So let's say right here's the first one's going to go. And then the second one would go right there. Okay. Um, let's have you build this one first and we'll put this one on snooze because we need to save wood because we'll have to fertilize the fields and the the wood is required to fertilize the fields and uh that cycle is going to come and go right now so we do want to hoard wood a little bit here because that's going to need, be needed shortly it's 40 wood per field so you know 40 80 it's going to cost us 160 wood to keep all these fields fertilized uh right now but if we can get the resources delivered here, build this pig farm right now, that'd be huge. It gives me another workplace for three more people. And it looks like we're going to be able to build it in time. So I'm, I'm happy about that. There we go. And done. Perfect. So now we just need this to be managed by somebody. And we'll give this to... Let's give this to Glance. The ruler of Sparkfall has died. Ah... Sparkfall's ruler has died, and now Wastra is queen of the land. And her son, uh, Zivagast, who is only five years old, is the heir. Oh boy. If you want to put this place into turmoil and chaos, uh, you just take out her... You just take out her son right now, basically. Uh, it would fall to... Uh, still a child, still a child, still a child. <laughs> you just take her out right now, and the land would be ruled by a five-year-old. <sighs> oh my gosh! Can you imagine? Like God, the way that things, the way things worked back then, just ugh. I don't know if that's that's not for me, man. I don't know the way that stuff works. Ugh. Anyway, uh, back out of the world map here. So we uh, should have enough workers to work this now. This is going to require rutabaga. And uh, basic resource could be used for production of moonshine and meat. So basically, the pigs are going to consume the rutabaga. Uh, that means we're going to need to grow it. So we need a rutabaga field as well. And that is going to be over here. So rutabaga field is going to be right over here. And I believe with a 92 is probably good enough. I want to leave enough room to like have many fields as we progress. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm okay with not having hundred percent, just as long as I'm leaving an adequate amount of room for other fields. I think the 89, like you're only getting 3% from this, but you're also moving up and potentially covering another field. So I think I'm okay with 89% here. So we'll have this field done. That's another 40 wood. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think another 40 wood is fine. We're having 135 coming in. So I'm all right with that. So hopefully they'll look at on the building that too. And Glance can come over here and provide this building with instructions. That'd be great. I'm sure he's very busy doing other things. Like going on a date. Gosh, man. Now, again, I'm paying unemployed people as well. I'm hoping that's going to keep the number of new Vagabonds down. But now that we have Warriors... I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how like, TND is waiting for a sparring partner. I, I don't know if they are going to patrol at night or if I need a different, uh, a different unit to do this. This is the reason why I got the warriors is so that these guys could be on here. But it says zero out of three guards, zero out of four guards. I believe 
that's because it's just not time yet so when it happens to get to 23 i want to look at this at that point and see whether or not those warriors are in the area they may not be enough to deter but i'm hoping that they are just being there is enough to deter them is what i'm hoping do i play a dice with this guy again i mean he's only got 11. oh he's da oh he's daydreaming in the middle of the temple he's daydreaming okay that's a, that's what he wants to do is lay down to daydream all right the trader is here so why don't we take this inspiration that charles has his 13 trade skill and take this opportunity to maybe invest oh i don't have a whole lot of cash. i'm 190 oh 195 i'm really running low on cash man it is hard to keep that up i could i could give the wood but I'm, I'm gonna need to build with it now i have a lot of spare books things that i've already read so pig farm for example we could sell that back it does mean that if anything happens to charles we lose the ability to build a pig farm until somebody learns it right until somebody else reads it uh but pig farm is not that inconsequential to lose so i'm gonna go ahead and sell that correct cutting uh kind of the same thing i don't think that's a big deal so we'll go ahead and let that happen flavorful ale i'm gonna keep until someone else knows it. it's a very good thing to learn for happiness for later hot field and beer i'm pretty sure more than one person knows this it's an easy book to write we're gonna have to keep chancellor because we don't know that yet keep prisoners can go um training ground can go temple uh temple can go uh, workshop we don't know yet cooking meat we can put that out uh scaffold we're reading it now we don't want to we don't want to sell it while we're reading it and uh mining can go we definitely don't need that book so that's going to be 700, uh, 766 gold while we have a trader that's lower than me and we have a prices in our favor i think this is the right time to do that uh we can trade it for uh longevity might have been an interesting thing later uh rutabaga efficiency could be now that we're gonna have pigs that might be useful alchemist lab would be nice for starting to make meds might be a good trade to get into is selling medicine so we might want to look at that actually i'm gonna take the alchemist lab um and then from here i'm going to buy i'm having a hard time keeping up on beer i want to keep people happy but i do want weapons and uh i'm gonna buy one two uh let's do two maces um one two spears 10 times stronger than the spear is the sword is 10 times stronger than a spear wow uh five times stronger than the mace two times stronger than the battle axe so a sword is just the best that's interesting allows for effective pairing of the opponent's attacks providing additional protection it breaks very rarely. Your warrior won't be left without a weapon in the middle of a battle. Okay, I like the idea. These things all sound great. So why don't we spend on one sword instead of two spears? Oh, but I, I can't do this. Oh, improve your relationship with Matriarch to 50. Oh, so the... Oh, I get it. So the church just determines whether I'm allowed to buy this or not. Well, of course they do. <laughs> of course they do. Two spears it is. All right. At least I can equip everybody. And of course, they won't sell me any armor either. Um, might want to buy one bow. Might want to buy one bow. I don't know if that's worth it right now either. Uh, okay. So I think I'll have this. At least now we have weapons in our possession, which is important. We'll trade away, trade away, trade away most of those books that we had. Um, we have weapons in our arsenal now, and then that means we can equip our warriors with that. Uh, speaking of warriors, though, now that we have uh, all that money, let's take a look at their prisoners, right? And uh, we don't want any Caden. I'm looking for Varns that has combat skills. None of them are Varns with combat skills, so never mind, I guess. Um, why don't we... You know what? Why don't we take the Rutabaga efficiency book? I'll go ahead and buy that back. 
I'll trade you a little bit of wood for it. I, I don't normally want to do that, but I do have a substantial amount of wood stockpiled at the moment. And so I will, I, I will give in and sell you 50 wood. So this book only costs me 86 now. Okay. So we're going to have that. That's going to be my trade for this. I think that's an okay trade. Again, we're trying to focus on defense at the moment because we have lots of criminals. So I think this is the time to do that. Uh, Sarista? Is that how you say your name? She's full of energy. She's menopausal, so pregnancy is impossible. She's Caden, so that's a good thing. Um, sublimation. Tiredness from work is three times weaker. 20% higher chance of nervous breakdown and does not suffer from lack of sex. Reason, long period of time without sex. So she's just like giving up. I love it. She's been so long without sex. She's just like, you know what? Screw this, man. I don't need that. <laughs> she's just accepted it. All right, cool. I like it. Uh, all right, so I want to see how this works. We got warriors in their bunks. Some of them are sleeping. Uh, characters can improve their skills through learning with other characters or by performing actions related to that skill. For example, studying knowledge increases the intelligence level. Children gain several times more experience from training than adulthood. Find a child and start their educating uh, education. Sorry. Find a child and start their educating. No, that's that's what it says. Uh, through the action menu. Your lord can also be trained by guests with good relationships. You can invite them from neighboring settlements. Okay, so... Alina? Did you have a child? It doesn't say you're with child anymore. Did you have your child? I don't see the baby. It says a baby is born, Ronan. Oh, he's already dressed and walking around. <laughs> of course. He's zero. He's zero years old. He's... There's Ronan. Oh, there's my heir. There he is. Traits. Child. This character, 0 to 13. Child learns quickly by observing adults, improving some of their random skills every day. Until the age of 21, the character gains twice as much experience from lessons. They can acquire positive or negative personality traits during their upbringing. The more you educate them, the better personality traits they will develop. They are capable of reading and transcribing books. Okay, well, the first thing we're going to do, young child, educate. We are going to educate you on the art of warfare. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you're going to learn it from your dear old dad. Nah, not from Sekmeta. No. Oh, Charles only had... Oh, right, his teaching skill. It's the teaching skill. I remember how bad I am at that. <laughs> yeah. The teacher has a teaching skill of four and can provide five experience points per lesson. Sekmeta can do significantly more in this field. Maybe I hire her to teach him. <gasps> That's not a bad deal, honestly. She's over here. She's playing dice. If I hire her, a capture. Oh, I don't want to capture her. Can I not hire her? Maybe, what's bribe? Give the Lord, uh, give the character seven rings and try to in instill dissatisfaction with her own king. No, 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 no. I just want to hire you to teach my kid. Can I not do that? Is that not a thing? Fine. Whatever. I don't care. Ronan's going to get taught something, all right? My teaching skill might be bad, but you're going to learn something, okay? Persuasion skill, manners, economy. Yeah, I mean, again, my teach it's all about teaching skills, so there's not really a whole lot I can do there. So I guess if I was going to teach you... Let's have Glance teach you philosophy and intelligence and stuff. Let's make sure you're smart. Teacher will be able to develop the student's skill intellect up to 11 and teaching up to 5. So obviously you can't teach the kid a higher skill than you know already, right? So we'll have we'll have Glance teach you that stuff. He's going you're going to learn that from your uncle. He's going to train you up, kiddo. You guys are just going to talk about it during you know in the church. Yeah, I don't understand. Help me understand, Uncle Glance. <laughs> Nice. All right. Good. Uh, yeah. And the, the bishop is totally ignoring Rosie. Oh, she's having a great time. <laughs> she's just like, yeah, I'm feeling sick. 
uh, and the bishop's just like, oh, that sounds, that sounds great. He's not listening to her at all. Uh, I love it. All right, cool. Uh, Glance did not give this place instructions yesterday, probably because he was too busy, uh, you know, writing the book on mace stunning, which takes forever to write. But it's 40%. So it'll be lovely when he's done writing that because it means we'll have a copy of it. He'll know it, which means we all know it. And then on top of it, we can then sell that book back for like 300 gold. And Glance will have just made us 300 gold. And then, you know, if we need to read the book again, we can always read it with someone else because we still have a copy of our own. Uh, so that'll be great. Cool. Glance won't be able to move now because he's, uh, well, immobilized with his... Uh... Ooh, hang on. Can I... Can I make sure that you are... Yeah, you're patrolling. So you are my... My warrior, right? Loyalist. Yeah, you're a loyalist, and you do have a mace. Okay, so you have decided to grab a weapon while you're on patrol. That is good. You have also decided to grab a weapon while you're on patrol. I believe you're a warrior. I can't tell if that's what that symbol means. I think what that's, I think that's what that symbol means. So you're not. You're just a criminal. <laughs> but I have my three warriors patrolling, so good luck, assholes. <laughs> Love it. We're just guarding the king's place, and this dude's just strolling going, man, I'm not going to be able to kill the king now. This sucks. Yeah, five warriors in the city. How are my warriors... So this was my former slave. And uh, yeah, his mood is better. Fear of death is negative 38. It's still going to expire soon. So his mood is still bad, but at least his loyalty is still good. And then there's Chesta. Loyalty is still 100. I like that. And her mood is going is getting imp is improving. So this is good. My slaves are going to become... Uh, more loyalist. Oh, are you guys? Yep, here they go. Now, this should be a time right now. My warrior should spring into action here and stop this. They should kick his ass right now. He's trying to assassinate Charles, but he's got all these warriors surrounding him and he's got no chance. Super bold. Super bold. But my warriors and their zero combat skill overwhelmed the enemy and to drag his bloody ass to his grave. <laughs> so that worked. Uh, having warriors in the area, that's definitely working. I like that a lot. Okay, uh, Alchemist Lab, I think that's something we should definitely start learning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get Charles on that. And uh, the workshop could be interesting to know too. We can probably put Rotsi on that. Um, I don't know if rutabaga field is, is as important. We do have, well, I thought we had some rutabaga, but I guess we don't. Maybe that's more important to learn. I think it's probably more important to learn than, than the workshop. Mm, you know what? Let's put Charles on that. Put Charles on that. And then the Rosia can take the alchemist lab instead. Because I think I need the rutabaga stuff is first. Uh, obviously, this is going to get built next. And then uh, we need uh, like a warehouse and stuff out here too. So we're going to want to have... Oh, there's the herbalist. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to put the herbalist house like over here somewhere. So I'm thinking the herbalist house will go like right over here. That's pretty good. I know the arrow says here, but I think that's just like where the supply is. So if I put the house over here, it, she'll still be able to... They'll still be able to interact with that stuff. So we're going to do it over there, I think. And then I think I'm going to want two rutabaga fields, to be honest, because we're going to have a lot of pigs. We need to have meat and stuff. So we're going to put two fields, and I'm going to slide it over as much as I can. 60, 69, 77, uh, 85. If I do that, am I going to be able to place another one here? No. So that doesn't matter if I if I cheat a little bit. So I guess I'm going to have to be yeah, just like right. I might as well just go 100 right here then, right? Damn. Okay, fine. 100 right there. So two rutabaga fields here. And that leaves me room to grow anything else that I might want 
uh, in this area. Uh, and then the final thing here is to make sure we have a warehouse in the area and we'll put the warehouse, um, let's put it, I don't, I don't want it to interfere with a lot of trees, but yeah, it's going to have to be right here. We're going to have to take up some of the trees or anyway, are going to have to be disappearing. Uh, okay. We'll do that. Uh, without rutabaga, where there actually is no real reason, I don't think to, uh, have anybody working that pig farm yet because we don't have the the resources to do it. So make sure we have all the builders assigned. That'll get the unemployed to uh, have a job at least. And now everybody's employed. Good. The morning comes. Our king is still alive. Despite their best efforts. Damn cutthroats. There are now seven of them. Their population is growing somehow. It's crazy. Good news, though. The Caden are no longer one-third of our population. So their population is at least declining a little bit. And they tend to be... I think most of the cutthroats tend to be... Uh, no? Mm. Well, I can't tell who the cutthroats are. I can just see crime in general. And uh, less than half of them are Caden, but... It's possible that most of the, I'd like to say that most of the cutthroats are the Caden. Not just the criminals. They have a very weak army. Yes, I know this. This is still a thing we need. It says we need more temples. I think that's because this building can only handle 50 people. I think that's probably why. So we're going to have to re redo the fields, but I think it's probably a good idea to get another temple over here too. And so we could probably place another one right here. I can't rotate it. I was really hoping to have it face the other one, but it won't let me rotate it. What if I was to put it over here behind this? I have another temple, like just outside of town, like over here. Is that, is that okay? Or perhaps we put another, maybe we put it over here near where the Lords live instead. The Lords have their own temple. Maybe I'm going to place it here but I'm going to put a snooze on it. I'm just going to mark it for now. I'd really like the other buildings done first, especially the two fields. I'd really like these fields done first. Betrayal and love. Uh-oh. Okay, pause. Two things just happened. One, the protection of the loving family has been lifted. The loving family informs you that they are withdrawing their protection. You have been warned about this. Now your neighbors... Who have relations with you below negative 15 and are uh, negative 15 and below can engage in aggressive actions against you, including blackmail, intrigue, coercion into vassalage, and so on. Make sure you have a competitive army. Now we really have to start working on that. We just lost the protection, probably because we got above 50 people temporarily. Like real quickly, we got above 50 people. Also, this thing popped up and I have no idea why. <gasps> Betrayal in love. A character can fall in love with another if. Interest in them is above 60. They are not already in love with someone else. Or they have an unsatisfied need for sex. Scale below value below 25. Uh, a character can cheat on their partner or spouse under the following conditions. They are no longer in love with them. But they have an unsatisfied need for, <laughs> need for sex. So you can cheat if, um, you know, if you're no longer in love. Or they're just not satisfying you anymore. <sighs> Uh, I guess that's just how that goes. All right. Somebody's yelling like they're scared. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I do know that the night shift here worked really well. I like that a lot. Glance is starting performing the task for education. So Glance is going to continue to educate him for a little while. Uh, that'll just happen for a bit. We'll switch educators uh, after a bit, like to get him some combat experience and stuff. But this is going to help his intelligence. Which is overall just going to help him learn other things uh, better as well. So you can't see a whole lot going on here, but it does. It is clear like there is something happening with manners, persuasion, intellect, teaching, etc. That's happening. Um, he does have the beautiful trait, so he did get that from dad. Sweet, inherited it from Charles. Um, he also has the mental impairment, so he is going to learn slower too. Great, he's a beautiful, stupid. <laughs> Ah, oh, he got picked up a little bit from mom there too, didn't you? Go, son. <laughs> you can do it, buddy. 
Uh, sometimes, man. Mm, these damn kids, I'm telling you. All right. So, again, I want the builders to focus on this stuff up here. It looks like they're bringing the supplies up right now. And uh, they should get going on that. And uh, we should see... Glance has already given... Nope, has not given instructions here. Because I'm snoozing it. It's a good thing to have snoozed right now. Uh, we're going to have... Yeah, Ronin just gained a new level of intellect and teaching. That's good. And then I want to also get... Right here. So I want... Let's have Alina do this one. We'll have Alina come out and do these fields. Ah, here we go again. The king's ambition. The king decides it is now time to announce the ambitions that will determine the future of your noble family. Conqueror, unifier, fertile, or economic. So, same four trees as before. Uh, if we choose fertile again, we're going to be trying to get our population to 109 people. Um... If we go for economic, then we want to achieve a daily production of goods worth 2322. Which honestly sounds like a really great goal. I'm just not sure I can do it because of, you know. I feel like if I get this good economically, I would be able to afford mercenaries and if I'm in a, if I'm in trouble, right? We could really try to ramp that up. Fertile seems like a good progression because I get more and more people. I get more production. And with more people and more production comes, you know, the daily production of goods and stuff too. So, like, I think both of these are kind of similar because this is all about production of goods worth this much, not about, like, making this much profit. I think we can do this one. I'm going to go for an economic goal. See what that's all about. All right. So, is Rosia coming out here to do this, or, you know? Where is she? Where's she at? Uh, oh, she, she's doing this stuff. Obviously, I need to go through and get the lords to, like, have all their buildings clumped together. So, like, maybe have Rosia have these, and then Glance have these, and then the king has these. You know, have, have them be really close together. Uh, I definitely want the herb start stuff to start, too. We're going to have uh, the king manage that, actually, right now. So we can get out there and do that immediately. Because I definitely want these herbs to be connect collected soon. We're going to be using these for the flavorful ale. And, 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 you know, later once we have the alchemy lab and stuff, we'll start using it for the medicinal stuff. Um, but the flavorful ale is what I'm really trying to target here. And if I can get that going really quickly, it'd be great. Um, the next thing I think I'd want to do, though, is, you know, for getting workshop and everything. Uh, if I can make a good profit and I can make a good amount of resources that I can sell... When the trader shows up, I can just buy paper, but ideally, I would like to have several chancelleries set up. Uh, the chancellery, which is in the service department right here, this building, which we don't have. We, it's still locked because I haven't read the book yet. But this building, uh, as a reminder, it allows us to have this building manage several buildings. And so the Lord would tag up for their instructions to this building and then this building with the peasants working there, would then spread out and, you know, instruct several buildings. Um, and that allows lords to manage a lot more things. Um, but in order for peasants to dish out orders from the lord, they have to have it in writing with the seal. So it requires a constant paper supply in order for those commands to be given. And we don't have a constant paper supply. We have only two paper. We had five, but uh, writing this book on Mace Stun is costing us three. Now, three paper, absolutely worth the 300 gold that we're going to get for that book. But Glance has to write the book. And as long as Glance is... Are you saying bye-bye? Socializing. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Are you my friend? We're friends, right? Yeah. Hugging. Goodbye. There you go. See ya. See ya, Silo. Sorry about, you know, the whole bad luck with your rings there. I hope you're, uh, hope you don't feel too, too bad about that. <laughs> uh, we just really need more workers there. Okay, so we now have three people in this rutabaga field. That's really good news. Awesome. A wild wolf. 
has begun attacking one of my citizens. And I don't think she's going to live. This is a bad deal. Because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Unless I was to form an army right now and then just charge at this wolf, there's not a whole lot I could do about it. Now, eventually, I'd like to get, you know, again, daytime patrols and stuff that could help with that, but like, I don't have the logistics to do that. And so, this is kind of just something that's happening out in the wild. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, one of our Varn citizens has fallen at the, at the paws, at the jaws of a wolf. Darn Charles and Alina are going to spend some more time in bed together. You can't... I mean, I guess you could technically make another son. You could. <laughs> Did the sec meta just come into our bedroom right after we were done sleeping and just be like, Hey, uh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, Alina spent time in bed. That, you didn't just sleep with her, did you? Obsession with desire, hunger. I mean, she's super hungry. Look at this. She hasn't ate anything in a long time. No, no, no. You totally just... You just slept... It just said on the screen that you slept with your wife, so... That has to be it. She just came in to say bye. She's just leaving. That's all that's happening there. All right, so everybody gets paid, right? Everyone got paid a little extra than they usually did. My wages are pretty good. Unemployment benefits are there as well. And those unemployment benefits, of course, only get paid to the actual unemployed. And so, uh, it only paid one person anyway. It's not a big deal. Glance, Rosia, both stumbling because they never sleep because lords still don't do that in this build. So, <laughs> lords just have to be carried off to bed. It's just so weird. They really should make this game to where they can last an entire work. If your peasants can last an entire workday chopping trees and shit, the lords should be able to last an entire day, uh, you know, watching them cut, cut trees and shit. I realize reading books is mentally draining. I get that. Um, but it's, uh, not as, I wouldn't think it's as tiring as cut chopping trees and working in the fields all day. Uh, Glance, can you stop talking to Charles and write the damn book? You're at 40% here. I, I, you've been at 40% for an awfully long time. I really wish you'd finish that. I think he's got too many assignments to do. I think I'm going to have to move one of these things. I think the rye field is going to get changed to... Um, let's have Alina do the rye field. She's only got three things she's managing at the moment. And we'll have... Uh, yeah, Charles is doing both of these fields anyway. These mills are still already Rosia. Uh, we'll have... I think we'll have Rosia do this one too. That way Glance doesn't have to do it. So Glance, I've taken a lot of workload off of you as far as like what you have to manage. So I'm really hoping that leads to you you know, being able to, to handle the book. And now my warriors are back out, patrolling around. Oh, here they go. Trying it once more. Trying to get in to take down the king again. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Jeez. Look at that. Big stab. But now everybody's getting in there to help defend. Now it's four on one. She is still stabbing the king. Wow. She is actually doing some damage there holy crap she's still up how is she still alive that's crazy all right yeah wrap yourself up heal your wounds there you go extra scars man he's seen better days let me tell you this king is every single night somebody's attacking him <gasps> ronin doesn't have a house well he's just sleeping with mom Sleeping in mom's room. That's, that's pretty typical for a zero-year-old. You know? You got a crib or something in there. But we probably should give him a house at some point. At some point, he'll need one. Uh, let's see. So, flavorful ale. Yes, we want to make this. Uh, let's do this until you have ten. Yep. You definitely want to do that. Uh, flour. Yeah, until you have this much. That's fine. I think beer. Until you have ten. Yeah, keep ten. Keeping ten beer in stock doesn't seem to be enough. I'm going to up this to 14. Moonshine is going to stay 15, I think. Um, flavorful ale at 10 is good. I mean, there's no reason to ever have this much flour. I don't think, at least not yet. 
So we'll bring that down there, I suppose. Uh, and then having... I think having another mill, you guys. I just I feel like we're just not making enough. We have a lot of rye. We need another mill. You know? So I'm going to get another mill put in right over here. Uh, that's going to be my next build. So we can get even more. Now, you know, I really don't need that, to be honest. Because we can still upgrade these. There's still a couple of different levels to upgrade here. We don't have the necessary iron to do it, though. And until we get the trader or we get people bringing in their, you know, support, the our, our their villages and stuff coming in and bringing in their, uh, their contributions, if you will. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm searching for the word and it isn't there. Um, if they, you know, swear fealty to us by form of gifting us, by pledging to us. God, there was a word here. I just don't remember what it is. Oh my gosh. I honestly can't believe this war is still going on. I mean, this thing is crazy. I don't know what's causing all of this back, bickering back and forth here, but it makes me hesitant to take a side. I mean, obviously, I'd have to take the Varn's side, right? But, like, asking to be part of their alliance and all that stuff, it's, I mean, it's a nice idea, but like then I have to really get involved in that conflict, which could be fun gameplay, but... I don't know, it feels like I'm sticking my nose into something and I don't know if it belongs there. Uh, meanwhile, you got Dragonhorn over here, which is nice and peaceful and all that and minding their own business, but they're kind of surrounded by potential enemies. I don't know if they hate each other or not. It doesn't appear as though they do. Uh, these guys are in a, having a problem between the two of them. So if I, maybe I'll go get in with Dragonhorn and be like, hey, look, we're going to be buddies now. And I, I don't know. The problem with that idea though, as you can see, is that they're with Lakehorn, Lakehold. So I'd have to do something against Lakehold to get them. So it might just be better off joining with these guys and then being, you know, being part of something strong as opposed to just staying, you know, neutral over here. I have no idea. So far, neutrality is fine, but I've never really had to consider it because I've had that protection. Now that I don't have that protection, I probably should start thinking about that stuff, right? Which is why I've, you know, got a little bit of a barracks and all that stuff too. And to be fair, I should have gotten the army stuff a little sooner because I, I wasn't really thinking about criminals. I wasn't thinking about vagabonds being a thing. We know this guy's dirty. Like we know this guy's a criminal. But we have to figure, we have to actually uh, prove it, right? We need the scaffold to prove it, to prosecute him. Uh, and so that just requires some extra work it just requires extra work yeah uh so this congregation here right it can only have 50 out of 50 we're, we're definitely having a problem there and i could uh say it's not available for soldiers or i could you know start limiting who could be here and everything maybe i'll have the lords have their own and the, the peasants can have their own but there's obviously going to be a little bit of a skewed result there is there's no reason to really do that i don't think uh not unless we just have a lot of uh there's like a lot of temples already anyway. We can just keep the Lord separate, I suppose. Charles's face is all bloodied up still. Man. I wonder if these scars ever... Do they ever go away? Are they permanent? I mean, their scars are forever, right? Yeah, I think if he has an injury, it can go away. Uh, Ronan, let's see what your skills are like right now. You got one intellect, one teaching. And he's one years old now, yeah. So I think we should probably switch your education. Gave you a little bit of intellect and persuasion. I want to get you on, on trade, too. I want to start educating you on on the economy. Uh, and that's going to be a Charles thing. Yeah, because he's got the really good trade skill and everything. So we're going to get Charles to start teaching his son about the economy and trade. We'll have that go for, uh, I don't know, four or five days. I mean, we really want to nail into that. And then I'll switch him. Still Charles. We'll, we'll switch him into learning about combat and stuff too. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, this actually needs instructions every day. Yes, this needs instructions every day. So my warriors are not going to train unless Charles has already given him instructions. So what Charles should do right now, before educating... I think we need the, the, the rutabaga thing. It's not as important. I think I need you to go to the training ground first. Do that first, then you can teach Ronan. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do, all, do all your stuff here first. And I really wish you would have done the training first, since that's the thing that's... I mean, that's the only thing on your list that is gray. The one that's completely not inspected. You should have done that first. I wish you would prioritize things that are more urgent. Things that have been uh, going on for a while there, but I guess 
Maybe production is more urgent than... Oh, he's going back to do this. No, no, go to the training ground. Go to the training ground. There you go. There you go. Do that instead. All right, perfect. Now the warriors can get to practicing again. Now go educate your kid. They can get to punching each other again. <laughs> I love it. Uh, can we have more warriors, I wonder? Uh, yes, we can. Unhappy peasants. We can get more. Uh, one. And a two. Let's get, uh, let's get eight. Eight unhappy peasants. Come on down here and beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> there you go. Get yourself trained up while Charles teaches Ronan the importance of a balanced economy. Balanced in the, in your favor, of course. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, this is just short on workers. Okay, yeah, that's it. I, it's because I made them. It's because I made them warriors. You know, um, I would like actually the pig things. Let's get the pig thing turned back on. Uh, I don't want to suspend work. No, it shouldn't be suspended. Oh, it's because of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta actually turn workers on for this. Mm hmm. Yeah, Rosia, where's she? She's immobilized. Oh, well, I mean, she had a heart. She's daydreaming. Gotcha. She has a really deep desire for holy rings. Oh my gosh. She needs. Yeah, her loyalty is terrible right now. King, I want you to reward her. Get your reward on here, real quick. She has a deep desire for rings. We need to get her over there. We now know scaffold. Perfect. All right. This is what I was hoping to get done in this video. It just took forever to do. Uh, the scaffolds we're going to put over here by. Uh, the market and everything. Uh, we have a little bit of iron. I like that. We're going to just put one for now. And we're going to make that a big priority for the builders. Go. Yep. Please do that right now. Builders. And uh, if we can get this built, we can then employ people to investigate criminals. And then we have a prisoner barracks over here, which we can house them in, right? Another wolf attack. Gosh. You know, it'd be really nice to... Oh! It's my kid! Oh! That's the freaking Ronin is getting attacked! <laughs> what? Ah! Uh, I haven't taught him about combat yet. He's only a one-year-old! Charles, you need to assemble your army now. With glance. Assemble your troops. Immediately, sir. Immediately! Get over there. Attack that wolf immediately. Oh my god. He's going to die. Run away. Hunt that wolf. Hunt that wolf right now. That wolf dies right now. Yeah, you die. You're going to die right now. Right now. Kill it. Charles and Glance, you can work together. It's fine. <laughs> the other warrior's like, no, nah, nah, I'm not doing this, man. <laughs> I don't care. That wolf dies. Where's my kid? He's taking care of himself? Yeah, he, he he did it. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. I almost lost my son to a wolf. <gasps> All right. Sure. Yeah, that's a thing that can happen. Absolutely. Um. Great work, everyone. All right. I'm feeling really good about that. You know what? We should hunt more wolves. We should make sure a lot of these wolves just don't survive. Let's let's keep let's keep these wolves. Let's let's get rid of them. Let's let's actually take them down. Let's get this area cleared a little bit here. Oh my god, are you just did you just fall? Oh, he's just he's playing dead. He's like, "Ah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm scared about this. I don't want this." We're getting you real-world combat experience. All right, this is all part of your training. <laughs> oh, Charles is like, you guys got this, right? We're good. Okay, we're good. All right. That'll be good for now. That's a that's a good lesson for now, everyone. All right, let's uh let's leave. Let's let's get out of here. Oh my gosh. Scaffold. All right, a place for carrying out punishments. During working hours, executioners search for vagabonds suspected of crimes and lead them to the scaffold. If the suspect is identified, they will be punished with the chosen penalty. If there are no more suspects in the city, 
The executioners engage in prevention. They will intimidate all vagrants in a row, dissuading them from committing crimes in the next day. One executioner can intimidate one vagrant per day. You can also organize terror against different population groups. The building requires daily instructions to operate. So the terror against different population groups is the thing I was talking about earlier, where we need to get the Caden out of here. We can institute with our guards, we can institute sort of like being harsher and having unfair treatment to specific culture groups. And that will make them feel oppressed and want, make them want to leave. We're not going to necessarily lock them up and keep them there and throw away the key or anything. We're not going to do that, but we're going to make them feel very unwelcome. And so it'll make them want to leave. And that ultimately allows us to, in a way, uh, no other way of saying this, purify our uh, population and make it, you know, more Varns, if you will. Right. So that's one way for us to do that uh, is to implement it with, with the scaffolding. So obviously we would need to appoint a manager for such things. I think Charles will take this one personally. Uh, and uh, he'll provide instructions to the three that are going to be working there. And we have uh, a couple of different things. One, we can terrorize and terror is not being carried out. So executioners are now engaged in the search and just punishment of criminals instead. Once we have a pretty good grip on crime, we can then choose if we want to, to start dragging representatives of the Caden culture to the scaffold and punishing them for crimes they didn't commit. This deters migrants of that culture from their province for a few days. So like, this is going to make it like it, words going to get out that we're doing this. Right. And then Caden people are not going to want to come here. Right. Subjects of the Varns culture will be pleased with the repression against Caden people. So, our Caden, our Varn's population will, will really like this. Okay. Um, I don't know how the church feels about stuff like this, but it causes terror amongst those representatives who remain. So they won't want to be here. I'm not sure how it affects, uh, the two neutral cultures, uh, Maka and, and Tenari. I don't know how that, how it works for those. Uh, but that's generally how you, how you go about doing that. Okay. Okay, so that's a good way to end this video. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we've uh, covered a lot today, I think. We've done some pretty good progress in saving and protecting our king. Um, we got a night patrol that's guarding his house, which is so far working out really well. And uh, it's pretty nervous. He's going to die soon. Uh, we have more warriors now. So we have even more people guarding the house, which is good at night. Tomorrow, in, in game tomorrow, we're going to get... Uh, these guys instructions so they can go around and start questioning um, you know questioning all the vagrants we have 11 including eight cutthroats right so that's a lot um, that that's a lot so what we might want to do and I can cue this up as well what we might want to do is, is it service it's service scaffold we might want to put a second scaffold here uh, just to have a, a second group right somebody else that we can uh, uh, let's, let's put it right here. That's fine. It's kind of weird that it has to be so far away. Uh, we'll do it like this. We'll do this, these two right here. So we're going to prompt two of the new, an, another one to be built. It gives me the ability to have three more. And that allows me to question more people at once. Really try to keep the peace. Uh, and then if it comes time to, and it may, we need to get the Caden out of here. So I might use oppressive measures to uh, try and dissuade them from staying. And uh, hopefully, you know, kind of getting rid of them that way. I wanted to keep an eye on my money. Something I really need to keep an eye on here. I have 11 negative things. What are this? What is this? You have a dangerous neighbor. Your relations with one of several kings has fallen below zero. Tree wood? Enchantment? Interesting. So those are those are the Caden people, right? An enemy is plotting. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, uh, we need a chancellery. No, we don't. Um, I mean, I would love to have it. I just don't have a way of getting paper right now. And the trader does not come nearly often enough for me to be able to do anything with it. Um, although it does look like he's actually here now. He's he's literally walking. I put my mouse directly over him. So I will look at this trader, see what I can do about money and moving things around here. And uh, it looks like Charles now has an inflamed wound. He's at a risk of death from an infected wound in the next two days. The character needs to apply medical salve to the wound. 
lords themselves pick up medicine from the warehouse and use it if they can walk. Servants bring medicine to the homes of those lords who cannot walk. I do have some medical salve, so he will use that. It's fine. I had five left. I now have four, so you can see one has, has been used. Uh, so that's it. Uh, once we get the alchemy lab, we can, of course, use this to create more, and that's a really good source of money, too. Um, yeah, we definitely have a lot of problems, <laughs> especially this dangerous neighbor thing. Might want to look into that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to look into that, too. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you. We definitely have some issues to work on, but hey, I'm one step closer to being able to defend ourselves. At least there's that, okay? Take care. We'll see ya. He's not dead. He's just unhappy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this guy. He's just playing dead. Bye-bye. <laughs>